All right, we're right at the beginning, section 1-1. One, one. And here are three, three words that actually don't have definitions. Now, I'm not one of those teachers anyway that says, okay, define this word, and you have to write out the definition exactly right and all that kind of stuff. I, I think that's kind of pointless. I don't think you really learn by doing that anyway. You might memorize it for a day and then forget it. But I want you to really understand what these words mean. That's more important to me than anything else. So three basic words. Okay, it's point, line, and plane. All right, so um, those are the three things we're going to, the main things we're going to talk about today. And we'll be using these really the rest of the year. Okay, all three of these things, especially point and line, but plane as well. Um, all three are undefined terms. There's no definition. There's no real definition, ge uh, geometrically anyway, for, uh, for these things. But we can describe what it is because um, they kind of, I don't know, I hate to say they don't exist, but... Um, I don't know <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Uh, but they are undefined terms. Let's write that down. They are undefined terms. So you don't really have an official definition. But what we're going to do is just kind of describe them. We're going to learn how to label them and that kind of thing. Everybody should be writing. Everybody should be writing on something. Get a sheet of paper out. Or you should have a spiral notebook. Okay, That's what I want you to take your notes in. So I always have this. I'll always start off with the section number at the top. So write the section number at the top, just like I did, and then write the stuff that I write. If there's something that I say that I didn't necessarily write, you may want to jot that down as well. Okay? Don't just be locked into what I'm writing, but you can write other things as well, maybe to help trigger your memory on some stuff. Okay? So undefined terms. Those are three undefined terms, point, line, and plane. First of all, let's talk about a point. A point just... It, this isn't really a true definition. It's just a description of it, but it's it's a place. It's it's one location in space. Okay, that's what a point is. Again, I said they're undefined terms, so it's not really a definition, but it just explains what it means. I guess I don't know. Maybe that is a definition, but it's just one place. Now, what I'm concerned about is how we describe it on like a piece of paper, okay, or on this board right here. So what I'll do is I'll put a little dot. That dot represents a point. It's not really a point because a point doesn't have any dimensions to it. It doesn't have any length. It doesn't have any width. It doesn't have any height. Okay, really, there's no dimensions at all for a point. Um, you can't measure it. You can't say, oh, this point is this high or it's this wide or it's this long. You just can't do that. This dot, you could do that. If I blew the dot up, okay, it's not a very good looking dot, is it? Let's see, let's circle it in or even if I made like a little tiny one all right I can make it tiny 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 but still if I make it big enough it's got some width to, to it doesn't it it's got some height watch I can make it oops I can't even make it that tiny with yeah that's about as small as I can make it with this with this thing but if I go see it looks like a really tiny dot doesn't it but if I blow it up it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and I could measure it if I wanted to. So the dot itself is not a point. What does it do? It represents where a point is located. Does that make any sense? All right, so that dot right there is not a point in and of itself, but it's a place that, it's a dot that represents where the point's located. A point doesn't have any dimension at all. It doesn't have any, uh, any size to it would be a good way to say it. But we do have a way in geometry to label a point. We're going to be doing this all year long labeling stuff especially at the beginning of the year we're gonna label a lot of stuff and you really gotta to get to know how we label this stuff so if you label a point what we do is we use a capital letter and let's just get rid of those dots let's just make one nice point right there so there's a point right there so we would use a capital letter to represent that point you could use any capital letter I like to start at the beginning of the alphabet Plus, my name starts with an A, so that's a good one to use. Okay, so uh, that would be called point A. So if I said, um, what is that point? You would say point A. And you could write the word point, and you could put A. That's probably the best way to write it. And there will be some times, there will be some problems where you have to look at something, and they'll say, okay, tell me something, you know, where... I don't know. Your answer might be point A. You know, it's at that spot right there. You would just say point A. That's what you would do. All right? Easy enough, isn't it? So one capital letter. You can use any letter you want, want to in our alphabet. But I just decided to use point A. So that point right there is point A. Remember, the dot itself is not the point. Um, it's just something that shows you where the point's located. All right? I can't, I can't put a 
dot small enough to really represent how big a point is because a point doesn't have any length or width or height or anything, right? So that's point. What about a line? A line is basically a collection of, again, this is not technically a definition, but a line is it's just a bunch of points lined up next to each other, I guess, if you could call it. So let's draw a line. So there's a line. And we put arrows on the ends, OK? Now, a line has an infinite number of points. What do I mean by infinite number? What does that mean? So anybody tell me. You can talk to me. Go ahead. Yeah, it just keeps going. There's, there's so many points on this, you can't even count them all. There's always going to be, you can count as high as you possibly can count. There's always going to be another one. There's always going to be another one. There's always going to be another one, OK? How can you fit? that many points on here? Well, because the points don't have any size to begin with, all right? So you can fit as many as you want on there. So a line has an infinite number of points. And what do the arrows represent, do you think? It does what? The line keeps what? Going. Keeps going. That's right. It keeps going in both directions. So that's a, that's a line. We can describe or um, label, okay, these are all, this is all talking about labeling. We can label this line in a couple different ways. We could just use a lowercase letter. Um, let's use like an L. It's like a cursive looking L, all right? So we could call it line L, or you could call it line M, or you could call it line A, little A, or little M. You can use any letter you want. I just decided to call it line L. So that's one way we could, we could describe that line. There might be another line that looks like this. That's not line L because line L is this line. This might be line, I don't know, D, lowercase. So that's one way that we can describe a particular line. Here's another way we can describe a line. Actually, make these lines a little nicer, a little straighter. My arrows don't look so great, but there you go. So here's a nice line right here. Now, remember, there's a bunch of points on this line, but I'm going to label two points on this line. Now, how do we label a point? What kind of a letter do we use to label a point? A capital letter. So if these are two points that are labeled. Now, does that mean there's only two points on that line? No. How many points are on the line? An infinite number. That's right. There's an infinite number of points on the line. I just decided to name two of those infinite number of points. Does that make sense? A lot of people get confused with that. A lot of people think, oh, there's only two points on that line. No. There's an infinite number of points. I just decided to label two of them. Um, let's just go easy and call it A and B. So this would be point A and this would be point B. What's the minimum number of points do you think is required to make a line? Two. two, right. If you just have one, you have no idea where that line's going to go, right? It could go anywhere. Um, but if you have two points, your line can only go one way if it goes through both of those points. So you've got to have at least, at the very least, two points for a line. Now, you know all points have an infinite number of points anyway, but you've got to have at least two to have a line. So there's two points right there. We labeled them. And... Um, this is what we would call this. We would call this line AB. Let me show you how to, we don't put the word line in front like we did point. This is how we do this. This is probably one of the more common ways to label a line. You put the two points, A and B, right next to each other, and we put a little line symbol over top with arrows going both ways. That right there, that means line AB. Pretty simple, isn't it? All right, so you just take two points on the line, it could be any of the points. I could have labeled five or six different points, but you wouldn't name the line with all five or six points. You only take two of them. All right? This is very important. You just don't realize how many times you're going to use this through the rest of the course, really. Not even just this chapter. Through the whole rest of the course, you're going to be using this stuff over and over and over and over again. And this is the first time you've heard about it. Another way uh, you could name it doesn't have to go A then B. Alphabetical order means nothing. Um, you just go from one point to the other. So what do you think is another way? I'll put an or. What do you think is another way I could name this? I could name it line AB or, talk to me, BA. Very good. Line BA. You wouldn't just say BA. You would say line BA. And you don't just put a line without the arrows. You've got to put both arrows on there. All right? That means line BA. It's the same exact line, though, isn't it? All right? Line AB and line BA aren't two different lines. They're the same exact line. It's just two different ways to name that line. That's all that is. All right? We'll be doing a lot of this stuff in geometry, especially at the beginning of chapters. Learn how to label stuff. Learn what stuff actually means before we actually start doing some real work with it. All right? So this is kind of normal for the beginning of a chapter. 
it's a little bit different than your traditional math class. You know, usually you go to math class, you learn how to do these problems, they give you a whole bunch of problems to do, and you just, you know, get the answers. Geometry is a little bit different. I mean, you'll have plenty of that kind of stuff, but at the beginning of these things, you're learning how to set things up, how to label it, how to, uh, how to work with these things and all that kind of stuff. All right? All right, I think we covered it with point and line. What was the third thing we talked about, the undefined term? It was a plane. So let's talk about a plane, not an airplane, but a geometric plane. Um, let's see. Let me make a nice plane right here. Let's do like this, and I can tilt this thing. It's been since June since I've done this, so i got to remember. Uh, it's not rotate. It's shear is what it is. Let's go like 30 degrees. There we go. That's pretty, isn't it? Look at that. Can't do that on a chalkboard, can you? <laughs> so they're not that nice and neat anyway. Uh, this is what we usually, that's the kind of a shape that we usually use to represent a plane. But let's just talk about a plane, what a plane actually is. A plane is just a whole bunch of points. Um, again, there's really no definition, so I can't say, okay, this is a plane. Um, let's take a look at this piece of paper that I'm holding right here. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, can't see me, but I'm holding up a piece of paper, flat in my hand. That represents a plane. Okay, it's not a whole entire plane because if a plane is made up of a whole bunch of lines, what do the lines do? They keep doing what? They keep going and going and going, right? So what do you think about a plane? A plane's going to do what if it's made up of a whole bunch of lines? It's going to keep on going and going and going. That's right. So it's a flat surface. Okay, it's a flat surface that just keeps on going forever and ever and ever and ever. It doesn't have any height. Now, this piece of paper does. If I got really, really technical, if I, I could measure how tall this piece of paper is, right? Would you agree with that? But a, an actual plane doesn't have any thickness at all. But a plane, this represents what a plane is. So like if I, you know, if I just took a flat surface, and let's just use this thing right here, this graphics tablet. Here's a, this represents a plane, all right? But what happens? It, a plane doesn't really have edges. It doesn't stop because a plane keeps on going forever and ever and ever. Look in the room. There's, plane, there's things that represent planes all over the place. Look at the ceiling. The ceiling is not a, really a plane in and of itself, but it represents where a plane's located. The walls, they're flat surfaces that represent where a plane um, exists, okay? Now, the wall is not a plane in and of itself because the wall doesn't keep on going forever and ever, does it? The wall eventually stops. It stops at the bottom, stops at the top, stops at the sides. Okay, but a plane keeps on going forever. So if you took that wall and just in your imagination pretended it just kept on going forever up, down, left, and right, that would actually be a plane. You get it? You can't actually build a plane. Now, you could build an airplane, but that's not what we're talking about. You can't actually build a plane because a plane would keep on going forever, and there's just no way to do that. So that represents a plane. It represents a flat surface is basically what that represents. All right, everybody understand that? Now, how do we label it? Let's put the word plane out here. Well, we label it with a capital letter again, and we usually put it in one of the corners. It really doesn't matter what corner you put it in. So, um... I don't know. Let's call it. Give me a give me a letter besides A. Give me a nice letter. Who's got a favorite E? All right, plain E. That's the first one I heard. Sorry. So plain E. We'll call that, and that's what you would call it. Now there's no symbol. You know how the line thing had the line symbol over top of it. On this, you just write the word. You just put plain P L A N E, plain E, and we always use a capital letter. Don't put a dot there or anything because that would represent a point. You just put it in one of the corners. You could put it up here, down here, down here, or up here. It doesn't matter which corner you put it in. All right. So if we look at this, we call that plane E. Make sense? All right. So let's keep going. What if I did this? What does that little dot represent? A point. So what would I name that point? Point A. Very good. You guys are catching on. All right. So this is point A. Point A is actually in plane what? Plane E. So I would say point A is in plane E. Does that make sense? All right. What if I put a point out here and I called it B? What would you say about that? It's outside. That's right. Now, it's kind of hard. We're talking, th we can talk three dimensional figures, but we have to write it on a two dimensional surface here. Okay. So sometimes you got to use your imagination a little bit. Um, even though you're like, well, wait a minute, I could extend this. Watch it. I could even do this with this program, which is cool. Watch. I could extend this and say, well, now it's in the plane, right? Because you said the plane just keeps on going forever, right, if I extended it. But that's not – you, you got to um, – 
you got to think about what these things represent. Destiny Morris, David Manley, Madison Healy, Nathan Walker, Courtney Landers, Kathleen Becker, Shereen Tanyas, Matt Fleming, Miranda Bollinger, Anna Bendler, Kristen Wolf, Rebecca Richmond, Chrissy Bonsbach, Emily Wagner, Taylor Holt, and Kenny Donnelly, please come to the office. Everybody else is dismissed now to Chapel in the Pusey Center. Are you kidding me? We're getting out this early? A couple more kids, please come to the nurse's office. Oh Grace my Persinger. goodness. All right, well, you guys Ryan got off Barrett, lucky. No homework tonight. Rachel we'll finish it tomorrow, okay? Michael 